الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد رسول الله خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين إخوة الكرام أيها المؤمنون أنا عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أحب الناس إلى الله أنفعهم للناس وأحب الأعمال إلى الله سرور تدخله على مسلم أو تكشف عنه كربة أو تقضي عنه دينة أو تطرد عنه جوع ولا أن أمشي ما أخلي في هجة أحب إلي من أن أعتكف في هذا المسجد شهر إباد الله أذكروا على الدوام أن الله أمركم بالصلاة والتسليم على أفضل خلقه وأزكى البشرية محمد فقال في كتاب العزيز إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد في الأولين وصل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد في الآخرين وصل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين وصل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد حتى ترس العرض ومن عليها وأنت خير الوارثين وصل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد في كل وقت وحين وصل على الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى ملائكتك المقربين وعلى عبادك الصالحين وعلى أهل طاعتك أجمعين من أهل السماوات ومن أهل الأرضين وارحمنا وحشنا معكم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, we give him thanks and praises, the Lord and cherisher of the whole of the universe. We thank him in a manner that is befitting of his grace and gifts. Unto him belong all grace, unto him belong all favors. Unto him belong all adoration in his perfection. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah alone. He is one and has no partner in his kingdom. And indeed, he has commanded that no one should be worshipped except him. And I bear witness that our leader and beloved and intercessor Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed his servant and messenger and the last of all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah to bestow his peace and blessings upon the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household and companions and all those who follow him on the path of righteousness till the day of judgment. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as usual, I want to begin with myself and all of you. But let's all fear Allah in all honesty and in all truthfulness. And let's obey him in all that he has commanded and all that he has prohibited. My dear brothers and sisters, my reflection with you this afternoon bothers on the righteous things we do to give meaning to the purpose of our lives. And to proceed, the text that I have found most profound to draw home this idea and to draw home this kind of responsibility is Surah Al-Mulk, where Allah says, Blessed is he into whose hands is the dominion of the heavens and the earth. Blessed is he into whose hands is authority and kingdom and dominion. And he has power over everything. The one who created death and created life so that he will test so that he will test you to see among you who will be the best in action, in deeds. In other words, when we are created as believers, we take the path of pursuing perfection in deeds in order to give meaning and purpose to why God has created us. Each one of us has been created and planted like a plant. Planted for the purpose of God. And to yield a, proof, a profit and to yield fruits 
that will impact and make a contribution to life. That which sustains us as we embark upon this journey is the faith that we, we, we hold that is under the plant that holds us. And so therefore those who see us from outside, they see only our outward facade. But that which holds us and give us a sustained feeling of responsibility to be dedicated to the cause of Allah is the faith that holds us. It is in this, part, in this particular side of the faith that we are saying we shall be tested. Each one of us will be subjected to the test of Allah. Test in the sense of assessment or evaluation. Whether we have answered to the call to live a life of fruitfulness in this life or we led a life of vanity. Related to this, is the rhetoric Quranic question that should make every one of us reflect and find in his life where to locate the purpose of God, why he has been created, and to live a life that leads him to the fulfillment of that purpose. The Quran asks the question, Afa hasibtum annama khalaknakum abatha wa annakum ilayna la turja'oon As humans, do you think or do you imagine that we created you for fancy, for play? Do you think this question throws to me and to you, to you? So do you think having considered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you think he be that so purposeless that he creates you in this world, gives you all that you need to survive and that there's no purpose attached to the grace that he gives you? After a symptom, that we created you, Abasa, for fancy, and then you still think that you also think that you shall not be made to return to us. Check your life daily and see how you are fulfilling this. So this particular text drops home an important understanding that man has been created as a responsible being. And so therefore he's requested to live a life of responsibility. And that is why I can understand why one day when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was part of a jama'ah that went to the cemetery, to the graveyard to, to bury. And after everything has been done in terms of the rituals expected, to give honor to the human person when he dies. Then the Prophet told them, Istaghfiru li akhikum, was'alu lahu tasbita fa illahu al-ana yus'al. Seek Allah's pardon for your brother. And pray for him and request from Allah to strengthen his tongue in answering questions. Because as he lives now, he has been questioned. What is, he been, what is he been questioned for? What is he being questioned about? About the totality of the life. The hours, the weeks, the days and the weeks and the months and the years. And what these calibrations of time have been used for in fulfillment of God's purpose for that human being is what he's been asked for. And so therefore, man pursues in this particular path, pursues perfection. Perfection in satisfying Allah's purpose and seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our progress towards this perfection therefore will not be established except we have perfected our deeds. And in all domains, in all domains and dimensions of life, all without exception, our moral lives, 
our social lives, our political lives, our family lives, our public life, in our business life, how we deal with people with whom we engage in business. Those of us who have been put in place of authority, where the state wealth have been put under our custodianship, how we deal with this, how we are dealing with people put under our care, the rights of people that have been put under our care. There is no domain that is left unattended to. Respect to understanding why God has planted you in that particular state per position. You have been planted by God for a mission to be accomplished and for a purpose to be fulfilled. Where do you locate yours? Where have you located your purpose? How do you understand why God has put you wherever he has put you? And when we do this, that which also makes our deeds, even when we strive to attain that perfection, is that we do so purposely in order to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that has to do with our intention. And also hoping for, hoping for God's compassionate and graceful reward that he makes available to us. In other words, we are asking, reminding ourselves that as human beings, when God has created, we live not for ourselves, but I will live for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will live for society. How do you make yourself relevant if you happen to be the most powerful person in the world? How do you make yourself re relevant to others who are weak? If you are wealthy, how do you make yourself relevant to those who have not? If you are so strong, how do you make your strength relevant to the feeble of society? These are the questions. And so therefore, in the story of Isa alayhi salam, in the story of Isa alayhi salam, when he had to speak to exonerate his mother of the calumny that was associated with her. When her family people felt uncomfortable that he has come home, the newly born child, they were asking her, Ya Ukhta Harun, ma kana abu ki mura'a sa'un, ma kana abu ki baghiya. Where have you brought this thing from? Where, where from this? In our family line, we, these things just never happen. What have you? So now Isa alayhi salam had to ex exonerate her as an infant, as a child. Qala inni Abdullah atani al-kitab wa ja'alani nabiyyan wa ja'alani mubarakan ayna ma kuntu wa awsani bi salat wa zakah ma dumtu hayya inni Abdullah I am the servant of Allah Atani al-kitab is giving me a book and he made me a prophet. And that is the meat of what I want to emphasize. And he made me blessed. Blessed. How do you define a life that is blessed? See, your life is a blessing to others. Your life. Check your life. Your life. Is it a blessing? How do you conduct life that will translate into blessing to others? So the Mufassirun then broke this one down in how I have been able to pick it up. He said, Jadani Nafan, he made me beneficial. Translating, make me blessed, make, make me beneficial. Haisu makuntu, wherever, wherever I may be. 
قاضيا للحوائج I solve people's problem solve people's problem I provide the needs the needs of people معلم للخير I teach goodness I teach goodness teaching goodness guiding people encouraging people to goodness Amiran bil ma'ruf righteousness I encourage people to do righteousness nahyan anil munkar discourage people and prevent them from doing evil mubarakan bi anwa al barakat different dimensions of blessing that I do and that's why Isa alayhi salam said he healed he healed the sick according to the Quran and there's so many other other services and so the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was made also to conduct his life and in Surah Al-Bara'ah those of you who know how to recite like ja'akum rasul min anfusikum azizun alayhi ma'anitum harisun alaykum bil mu'minina ra'ufun rahim the attributes listed in this ja'akum rasul an apostle a messenger of god has come to you min anfusikum from you from you it's a human being like you azizun alayhi ma'anitum your concerns and your worries bothers him what affects you your difficulties is a matter of concern for him harisun alaykum and your your well being is his desire your well being is his desire How, can, how will you live a life in which the well-being of others is your desire? My brothers and sisters, we have a very beautiful religion. It's understood if we work with these things, that is why we shall qualify. The verse that I like quoting to describe Muslims and as given to us by the Quran, Kuntum khayru umma. You are the best of nations ever created for the whole of mankind. You, Muslims, you and I, you are the best. We're the best because we must take a life that a blessing to the world. It is we. It must be a blessing to the world. And because of this, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam lived among his Sahaba, lived among his Sahaba as the most beneficial of human being among them. The most generous and the most honourable among them. The most compassionate and the most merciful among them. And so, therefore, I will check the time so that I don't go beyond the time. So, when the Prophet ﷺ wanted to encourage us, he's our teacher and our guide in life. So he does not leave us in our need for guidance unattended to. So he speaks to Sahaba about things that matter, about things that also make religion and faith meaningful in life. So sometimes he will use expression like, "The best among you is the best among you is." He would just describe it that way. The best among you. For example, he say, "Khayrukum amfaukum linnas." The best among you is the one who is most beneficial to people. Khayrukum man ta'allam al Quran wa wa allamahu. The best among you is the one who learns the Quran and teaches it. The best. So listen to the expression. The best. The best. The best among you. The best. Ahsan wa amala, the best among you. Khayrukum man taala umruhu wa hasna amaluhu. The best of among you is the one who is giving giving long life, long life, and then in the course of life, 
his, all his deeds are good. In other words, the more he lives, the more he has opportunity to do more good deeds. The more he lives. So it was a long life for many people. It's an opportunity to continue goodness. And as they crew and wait for the reward in the day of judgment. Ayyukum aksanu amala. Who among you will be the best in his deeds? Is that this earth, we have adorned and beautified the earth. We have made it an adornment or beautification of the earth. All the flowers that you see, all the good, good things that you see around the world, the beautiful sky and the colors, the blending of the colors that you see, and including the wealth that is given to us by which we are able to build all the mansions that give.